Good morning and welcome to Palm Sunday worship as we begin our Holy Week celebrations. If you are watching this in your apartment or room and you'd like to receive some palm at Rosemont, I'll have some at the Performing Arts Center on Sunday morning until about noon. And at Rosewood Gardens, I'll be coming through uh, on Palm Sunday afternoon. If by some reason I miss you, you can let recreation staff or um, let me know uh, and I'll bring it to you during the week. So happy Palm Sunday. Um, today, I invite us to think about how sometimes we are different people depending on who we're with. Um, I know when I'm with my one sister who's very fashionable, I'm much more conscious of what I look like. And when I'm with certain friends who laugh a lot, then I laugh a lot. Um, today, we're going to think about the crowd that was there on Palm Sunday and how they could go from shouting Hosanna on Sunday to crucify him on Friday. That we too can change depending on the crowd that we are with. So let's come to worship today. Our call to worship is from Psalm 118. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, and I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Our first hymn is Hosanna, Loud Hosanna. our strength in suffering and our hope for salvation. Lift up your word of life and pour out your spirit of grace so that we may hear your word and follow faithfully on the way to the cross. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes to us from the Gospel of John verses 12 to 16. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. 
So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. So let's think about symbols that we can have in our culture, things that we do or say or wear that indicate to another person what it is we are about. So if in the movie someone is wearing a big white cowboy hat, we know that he is the good guy. Black cowboy hat, the bad guy. Or if I make this symbol, you know I mean peace. Or means shh, be quiet. If you see someone wearing a long white dress, probably means she's getting married. There are all sorts of symbols embedded in our culture and we can't imagine someone not knowing them. As we approach this gospel reading for today, there are symbols abounding that because we are a little bit removed from that day and age, we need someone to tell us about, we need to think about. So first of all, Jesus is going into Jerusalem. Now Jerusalem, it's the holy city, the seat of power for the people of Israel, the political capital in that part of the world. They, of course, they were under Rome, but um, eyes were on Jerusalem. This is the place where the Old Testament prophecy said the Messiah would establish himself. And the gospel story has been building to this point. Jesus has been teaching now for a few years and he's been healing and demonstrating the kingdom of God, that all are welcome, that this is the way to salvation, that change comes through the power of God that there is forgiveness from God and second chances. But where did Jesus do this teaching and preaching and healing? He tended to do it very far from the seats of political power. He was from up north in Galilee. And also he would always like withdraw to a desert or a desolate place and people would come to him. He did come to Jerusalem from time to time as required for uh, the Jewish people three times a year to remember the work of God. And when he was there, he usually stayed, it seems, with his friends Mary and Martha and Lazarus, who lived in the suburbs, not in Jerusalem proper. He attracted big crowds in his ministry, but not usually in Jerusalem. He didn't go there very often. So as he rides into Jerusalem, he's making a statement. It's a symbol. He, those who saw him were thinking he was making a claim that he must be coming into this area, which he knows is full of enemies, with a plan, with some kind of forethought to how he would get out of Jerusalem. And then the next symbol we see is the word Hosanna, which means Savior or save us. It's from uh, Psalm 118, which was in our call to worship. Do you see where it says, um, save us, we beseech you, O Lord. That's Hosanna, O Lord, in the Hebrew. So they're saying, Hosanna, save us, Savior. And Jesus accepts that word. And then the palm branches. Palm branches were waved um, as a symbol of God's provision. In the book of Leviticus, there's a part of a festival that it talks about that the people were to take palm branches and wave them before the Lord as a way to rejoice in what God has provided. And then the symbol of a parade. Well, 
we have parades in our current time, but in the ancient world as well, when a conqueror had defeated a city and claimed it as their own, they'd march in with their army on parade. A few hundred years before, Alexander the Great would have ridden into Jerusalem with his army behind him with a great solemnity and show of strength to show the people, be loyal, I am your leader now. So riding in in a parade like this, the people are claiming, we have a leader, and here he is. So Palm Sunday, the crowds are great. It seems like the whole world has come out to see Jesus. And people would know these symbols loud and clear, that Jesus and his followers are saying something by this day, saying that he is the one that God has sent, and the people rejoice, and they want him there, and they join the parade. Whatever he's doing, they want. They get caught up in it. Hosanna. Here comes the Savior. So the crowd shouting Savior. It's probably many of the same people who when Friday comes and Pilate asks, what should we do with him? They get caught up with the crowd and say, crucify him. Crucify him. We wonder how people can be so fickle. They can change their tune from he's wonderful to we don't want him. You know, opinions, public opinions changes on a dime. And on Sunday, Jesus was the man to know, the man to celebrate. As preacher Nathan Nettleton put it, on Palm Sunday, the Jesus bandwagon is well and truly rolling. And everyone wants to be on him. But by Friday, the, two, the tide has changed. Things are different. I have a quote from Nathan Nettleton. It's a bit long, but it it's, talks about how this change could be made. He writes, if we want to understand how these people could sing Jesus' praises one day and call for his death the next, I don't think we need to look any further than ourselves, the content of our hearts, and the quality of our own behavior. You see, my guess is that most of you are not at all different from me, and I know a little of what I'm capable of. I know I can stand here and sing praises to Jesus one day and walk on the other side of the road as he lies in a gutter the next. I know I can be lost in wonder and praise at the gracious mercy of God one day and then turn around and the next day make a callous judgment of someone else, writing them off, rejecting them entirely without showing any sign that the grace I've been shown has begun to rub off on me. He writes, I know that some days I can sing in here, brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you and then walk out and treat you as though I was born to rule and you're lucky to have my company. And he writes, I don't think I'm alone. You see, it's easy to cheer for Jesus and wave palm branches and sing praises in a gathered assembly. It's not difficult to join in the singing at church and honor Jesus as Messiah and King and wave our palm branches around. But there is a lot more to following Jesus than cheering from the sidelines. What do the praises mean when we're behind closed doors and away from the public eye? Sometimes we sing in hymns, I want God more than gold or silver. But how does it affect us when our livelihood is on the line and we're being asked to make hard choices? Do we honor him with our actions or capitulate and crucify him? What do all the words of commitment mean when it comes to working out how we commit our time and our money? What do these words mean when we find ourselves in a group of sophisticated and successful people who are discussing how they don't believe in Jesus Christ? Do you praise him with our, your lips or crucify him with your silence? How could the crowds be so fickle? How could they cheer for Jesus one day and call for his blood the next? Perhaps they were just like us. 
You know, we look in judgment on that crowd, but we find that we too get swayed very easily depending on what everyone else is doing. We like to fit in. In our passage today, there's one symbol that we didn't unpack yet, the symbol of the donkey. And the gospel writer says they didn't understand it at first either, but they had to remember it later. And then this whole week made sense. So there is hope for us, us fickle people. When we remember what was written and we remember this symbol and what it means. So what is the symbol of the donkey? Well, when you think about it, if a person is riding in in a military parade, what is the vehicle they should be in, right? A giant tank or in the ancient world, the most beautiful, strong war horse that you could find. But something doesn't fit with what Jesus is riding in on. He's riding on a donkey. People who want to be taken seriously as warriors do not ride donkeys. Everything else is expected for a military welcome. Crowd, Jerusalem, palm branches, Hosanna. But the donkey doesn't fit. Did you ever have one of those moments where you do one of those puzzles where you have to figure out what's wrong with the picture? <laughs> I like those. This is one of those as well. What's wrong with this picture? And it's the donkey and the difference that that makes, makes all the difference. If you want to show that you are a hero that's ready to overthrow Rome, you're going to, you're going to ride a, a, a big old horse. But Jesus chooses a donkey. And the word here actually means little donkey. So not even a big stubborn donkey, a tiny little donkey. It says they didn't understand what this was, but it was prophesied. And we have the prophecy there in our, in our gospel reading. It comes from the book of Zechariah. Let me read it to you, the whole thing. It says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he. Humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem. And the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, from the river to the ends of the earth. So Zechariah says the symbol of the donkey means that the king of peace is coming to you, not one who makes war. So the king of peace coming to Jerusalem. I found it interesting. Jerusalem means pointing the way to peace, the Prince of Peace, coming to the city that points the way to peace. So what is Jesus about? Bringing peace. The donkey was a signal that something more important than a parade was happening. God's promised deliverer has arrived. And it sets up the rest of Holy Week, where we take the journey from the moment when the world went after him until the moment where he dies alone at the cross, where all the fickle ones have abandoned him because he's not convenient anymore, where he stands with just his mom and some of her friends and one of his friends at the cross. Why? Because they didn't understand this thing that didn't fit, the message of the donkey, that Jesus has come but he wants to change things from the inside out, change the world, not by forcing everyone to do things his way in a show of power, but by showing the way of service, that he's come to lay down his life so that we can be forgiven. And the way to transformation is to accept this servant of God and imitate him more and more. Dr. Scott Black Johnson says, God doesn't fax in, some, in salvation from some suite in heaven's ritz, ritzy district. God comes. God incarnates. God steps out of grandeur to stand with us in the awkward places at awful times to experience life and death. 
Jesus on this Palm Sunday in his triumphal entry knew that he was riding into Jerusalem, touching off a series of events that would lead to his death, but would lead to peace with God and peace forevermore. He comes knowing that many will misunderstand and miss the whole symbol of the donkey and think he's just another person clamoring to be in charge when he's come to give the ultimate sacrifice and bring us to God. So how do we apply this word this week? We look at our own fickle hearts and we ask that we might truly follow this Prince of Peace, to follow him on days of great hosannas and follow him on days when servanthood is discouraging and hard. Follow him when everyone likes you and when everyone has left you alone. Follow him down this road to the cross. Thanks be to God. Amen. Jesus, you set your face toward Jerusalem and walked alongside those who suffer. Be our vision that we too may walk the way of compassion and extend hand to those we meet. Lord, you see our own fickle hearts and how we change depending on who we are with. We want to be steadfast as you were, not having your head turned by the crowd's hosannas but instead walking steadfastly toward the cross. We want to walk steadfastly with you in the way of servanthood. We want to receive that life that is truly life. Lord, you stopped always to heal the sick and tend to the broken in body and spirit. Lord, we ask today that you would bring healing and help to those who are in need. Lord, you entered Jerusalem with peace in your heart. So we do pray for peace among the nations, peace in our country, peace in our neighborhoods, and peace in our lives. Bless us, O oh blessed one, as we enter into the days ahead of us. We need your power and presence to sustain us as we move through these days together. Spirit of love and life, stay close. And we pray as Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now receive the blessing of the Lord. May God, whose arms were spread on the cross to embrace the whole world, help you this week take up the cross and follow him. Amen. Go in peace.